Hello and welcome. This is the second part of Anglo-Indian Heroes, Myths and Legends by Warren Brown. I'm Warren. Major Haida Young Hersey was the son of a jot lady by Captain Henry Hersey. By coincidence, he was given the name of Haida, who was one of England's greatest enemies, Haida Ali of Mysore. It is believed that his second name was Jun, which means war, and it was later anglicized to Young. Haida Hersey was educated at Woolwich. Due to the enforcement of the ban against the admission of Anglo-Indians into the company's army, he would have been denied commission, but for the influence of his cousin, Colonel Andrew Hersey, commandant of the Allahabad Fort. His first appointment was an aide de camp to the Nawab Wazir in Benares. He soon effected an exchange into the Maratha service under Madhuji Skindia. In 1804, Haider Hersey joined Lord Lake. Major Haider Young Hersey went on a number of expeditions and took part in a lot of warfare during his lifetime. He served in the relief of Delhi and the Battle of D until the end of the war in 1806. In 1808, Haider Hersey accompanied Lieutenants Webb and Raper in an expedition to trace the source of the Ganges. The following year, Haider Young Hersey was involved in defeating a band of revolting Gurkhas. In the short war of 1971, several Anglo-Indian airmen won gallantry awards in India. Air Marshal Maurice Barker, AVSM, Air Vice Marshal J.F. Lazaro, PVSM, J.J. Boucher, AVSM, and A.L. Michael, A. Standing gallantry. Veer Chakras were won by Group Captain Betri Weir, AVSM, Wing Commanders DM Conquest, AVSM, Alan Ali, and Squadron Leader D. Lazaro were awarded VMs and mentions in dispatches. Lieutenant General Pat Dunn was awarded the Padma Bhushan for his exceptional valor in the defense of his country. He took an active role in the Indo-Pakistan War in 1965. Flight Lieutenant Bernard Owen Egan Walker was only 24 years old when he was shot down in a bombing raid over Germany on the night of December the 6th, 1944. Air Marshal Denzel Keeler was commissioned in the IAF of Indian Air Force on November 6th, 1954. His career covered 36 years in the Indian Air Force. Air Marshal Denzel Keeler has taken part in operations against Pakistan in 1965 and 1971 and performed with distinctions. Denzel Keeler was awarded the Kirti Chakra and the Vir Chakra by the President of India for gallantry. Air Marshal Denzel Keeler was born on 7th of December 1933. He worked as advisor aviation and was in charge of certification and inspection of air crew and operational surveillance at the Directorate of Civil Aviation, the DGCA. The Battle of Kut was another occasion when the courage of the Anglo-Indian soldiers was brought to the forefront. The battle started in 1915 and lasted for one year. An Anglo-Indian battalion fought against the Turks in the River Tigris near Kut from 25th December 1915. The Turks overran the position and only a third of the original force in devotion to duty in the face of Japanese bombers at Tongi Civil Hospital. Helen was matron, stretcher bearer, and performed many operations was captured by the Chinese and then by the Japanese who thought she was a spy. Helen was bayoneted by a drunken Japanese soldier. 
but she survived all her ordeals at the prison of war camps. 85% of the women of the Women's Auxiliary Corps of India were Anglo-Indians, including my grandmother, Iris Mantle. Apart from nursing, they also served in the army and navy, navy stores across the country. Flight Lieutenant Warnford, born in 1892 and died in 1950, was from Bangalore and he was the first man to shoot down the first Zeppelin in France. He won the Victoria Cross and the Croix de Guerre. After the Second World War, 16 Victoria Crosses were bestowed on Anglo-Indians and 97 military crosses were awarded for acts of heroism during the war. Anglo-Indian history is not short of war heroes and heroic deeds, moments of defeat, valor, and victory. Someone, somewhere, should create a virtual Anglo-Indian cemetery in cyberspace, and on the monument of the fallen Anglo-Indian soldier, the following words of Thomas Arnold could be inscribed as an epitaph. Two things we ought to learn from history. One, that we are not in ourselves superior to our fathers. Another, that we are shamefully and monstrously inferior to them if we do not advance beyond them. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe down for this video.